Hey, I'm Steve Mignotti here at MSD Performance in El Paso, Texas. Recently, MSD reset the bar for aftermarket EFI with its atomic EFI kit, basically allowing owners of muscle cars and street rods to replace their carburetor with a throttle body EFI system that was very simple yet very effective. Well, they're at it again with a new system for swappers of LS1 Gen 3 Chevy engines. The great thing about the Gen 3 small block is it has been around for almost 15 years and makes an excellent swamp candidate into things like Novas, Camaros, Chevelles, even Jeeps. The nice thing is it's a very compact engine Great power to weight ratio, it's mostly made of aluminum and it's an excellent swap candidate into things like this 57 Chevy, which we're going to be installing the Atomic LS system on right now. While the Gen 3 engine architecture is brilliant, it's not so easy to smile on the factory wiring harness. Frankly, there's an awful lot of harness that you don't need for a retrofit into a classic car like our 57 Chevy. So it's hard to imagine or hard to decide what to leave out of the harness, let alone what to leave in. Very confusing. Additionally, the factory ECM, the computer, is big, bulky, and to program this, you need a laptop. It takes a lot of the do-it-yourself out of an LS conversion. So, once again, MSD comes to the rescue with the Atomic LS fuel injection system. You don't need a laptop, it simplifies all of the wiring, and it truly is a do-it-yourself system. Just as the Atomic throttle body reset the standard for aftermarket EFI throttle bodies by incorporating the injectors and all of the sensors into a very compact unit, the guys who designed the Atomic LS have done the same type of engineering to simplify the process. Well, the same kind of compact engineering thinking went into the creation of the Atomic LS. Now, this is the fuel rail, right? Well, it's also the EC. There's one of these per bank on each side of the engine, and the ordinary ECM and external mounted wiring harness is built into the fuel rails. That's the beauty of this. It's very compact. It hides in plain sight. Of course, it has the normal amount of sensor connections as, as factory stock, but again, without the excess wiring, without the bulk and mess, the fuel rail ECM units are connected to the power module, which also runs external high load things like the cooling fans and the fuel pump. Now, the controller, of course, replaces the need for a laptop computer. That's right. All you do is answer a few car guy questions about your vehicle and engine combination, enter them into the controller, and you are ready to go. The wiring harness is included, of course. Look how small it is. I love this. Compared to the bundle of snakes that is the factory harness, this truly is do-it-yourself heaven. The system also includes a high-quality wideband O2 sensor, which we're going to install in just a moment. Now, for the purpose of our videotape, we are going to lift our 57 Chevy on a lift. If you're doing this in your driveway, you don't have to have a lift. Just make sure you support the car on high-quality jack stands so it's not rocking, and give yourself about a foot between you and your work, and you can do this in your driveway. The first thing we want to do is to install the wideband O2 sensor. Now, this is the thing you want to get out of the way first because it does involve some welding. So if you can't weld, take the car to uh, an exhaust shop and have them do this for you. The bung welds into the head pipe no more than 10 inches away from the collector. And what you want to do is basically have this welded in and make sure there are no exhaust leaks upstream. The reason is the wideband O2 sensor is very sensitive. We don't want to have any artificial oxygen entry or any kind of air leaks that might give this false readings. Now the wideband O2 sensor is included with the Atomic LS kit. And what it does, it allows the computer to read the fuel-air ratio in real time so it can, in real time, tune and correct the fuel delivery. And when you see your exhaust guy, make sure to tell him that you want to mount the O2 sensor no more than 10 inches away from the collector, more like 8 would be ideal, never on the inside of a turn, and if possible, mount it higher than the bottom of the pipe, and make sure that it's on a bit of an, an angle so that condensation and water don't collect inside of it when you park the car. That can get in here and cause problems. Well, while we're under the car, let's move to the back to the fuel tank and the fuel pump. Now, the earlier system did have a return style fuel system, meaning that the pump sent fuel up to the carburetor, through the carburetor, and then on back to the gas tank. Because it's already on the car, we're going to keep it. Now, the Atomic EFI system and the Atomic LS system don't have to be run with a return line. Here's the thing. If you run your car in a very hot climate like El Paso or with low octane gas, 86, 87 octane, you can get into a thing where the gasoline gets warm and begins to vapor lock. So, if you're going to run the returnless system, the best way to do that in hot climates is to make sure that the pump's installed inside the tank. That'll cool the pump, cool the fuel, and get you away from vapor lock. But again, because our Chevy already has a return style system, we're just going to reuse all the plumbing and all the lines and upgrade from the stock small 6 psi pump to the MSD 60 psi pump. Now, this has a 3 8 inlet and a 3 8 outlet and it has excellent flow characteristics. You don't want to run anything smaller than 3 8 on any fuel injection system. So we're going to mount the pump to the pre-existing mount bracket that was already in the car using the vibration-proof isolated 
installation clamps. Now with the fuel pump installed, we have to remember that clean fuel is critical to proper operation of any fuel system. So the MSD fuel pump kit comes with a canister style fuel filter. It does have the nice 3 8 inlet and outlet and is totally rated for the 60 PSI the system operates at. It comes with its own vibration isolated clamp and let's install it. The MSD fuel pump kit does come with several feet of high quality woven fuel line, enough to do the whole system of the car. So we're going to cut little bits out as we need them to connect the system. We want to be sure that you use high quality EFI style hose clamps like we have here. These are included in the kit. You don't want to use the old uh, snap rings or the type of the screw and a bevel. They're not really rated for 60 PSI and you don't want fuel leaks. While we're still under the car, we'll continue routing the rubber fuel line up toward the front. Again, it's 3 8 line for excellent flow capability. And we'll also run the orange fuel pump feed wire from under hood back to the pump, to the positive side of the pump. The negative side of the pump will get a ground wire that goes to the frame. And as we run these lines and hoses, we want to be sure that we route them away from sources of heat or pinch points or other things that might chafe through them. Okay, we've installed the O2 sensor, fuel pump, and fuel filter. Now, in our case, we're going to remove the hood because after all, we are shooting this video. You don't have to move the hood to install the Atomic LS, but again, it'll make our life easier. Our 57 Chevy project car was originally built with a 283 small block back in 1957, and that was a long time ago. It has since been upgraded with an LS1 engine. Now, recently the owner of the car had a four barrel induction on the LS1. It worked well, but he wanted to step up to the full benefits of EFI. So, because the Atomic LS is designed to work with stock style LS1 or Gen 3 induction, you have to go back to that, either aftermarket or factory stuff, but you have to know what your application is, because there are a variety of different manifold combinations that have been made in the last 15 years. If you're in doubt, go to Atomic EFI, the website, you'll find a database that'll show what exact combination you have, that way you can get the correct installation kit for the Atomic LS. Well, the first step in installing the Atomic LS is installing the fuel rail brackets. Let's get started. There are four fuel rail brackets per engine, two per bank, and these have to be installed using some extra length fasteners that are included in the kit. You want to keep in mind that these fasteners have to be torqued down to 89 inch pounds because the torque spec on these plastic manifolds is critical to proper sealing. With the brackets installed, now it's time to install the fuel rails. Of course, these double as the computer, the ECM, and all the wiring connections are on these pieces. Now keep in mind that the driver and passenger side fuel rails are different. There's some different connectors on each side. For instance, the driver side has alternator, coolant temperature sensor, and camshaft sensor connections, whereas the passenger side does not have these. But again, it's easily spelled out. Read the instructions. But before these go on, we'll take the cover off. And that'll allow us to put a little bit of oil onto the uh, ends of the fuel injectors for a good solid seal and to navigate how we touch this part down onto the engine. Once we have the fuel rail installed, now we can start snapping the connectors to their various terminals. Now the coil pack connector, one on each bank, fuel pressure sensor wire, Okay, now we'll install a throttle position sensor wire, and keep in mind that our LS1 is equipped with the uh, original style drive-by cable, the mechanical link. We're going to retain that, but the Atomic LS system is also compatible with later drive-by wire systems. Both types, it works with either one of them. Finally, our idle air control motor, we'll plug this wire in, and that wraps us up on the throttle body. With most of our electric connections handled, now we can turn our attention to the fuel system. Now the LS motor does have to have a fuel rail bypass line, a communication line if you will, and the kit does include the fittings and push lock connectors and plenty of hose. Now keep in mind there are a number of different configurations on the Gen 3 intake manifold and fuel rail situation. So the kit does include the parts you'll need to do it right for your job. At the rear of the fuel rails, because our car was originally equipped with a return style fuel system, we're going to retain it and connect the supply and return lines to the fuel rails. Well, with our electrical and fuel line connections done, all we have to do now is install the covers.
We're on the home stretch. The electrical and fuel systems are largely complete, but we still have to install a power module. On the bottom of this, there are four connectors. One goes to the handheld tuning module. Another goes to the wiring to the ECM and fuel rails. This goes to the main harness, which we'll talk about in a moment. And this one here receives 12 volt power from the battery and charging system and also runs the fuel pump. Now this is made to be installed inside or out of the car. It's weatherproof and heat proof, but in our case, we're gonna mount it here on the firewall. Okay, I've just mounted the power module. Compared to the GM stuff, this is really about as simple as you can get. Very quick, very easy. The circuits we're gonna be using here are 12 volt switch power, also the wideband O2 sensor, and a cooling fan triggering switch. We can actually use two cooling fans if we choose to. Now in this particular car, we're not gonna use some of the optional circuits, which include a two-step launch control, a rev control, also a nitrous timing retard feature, and also a speed reference for manual transmission cars. It'll help the engine to idle down better with a stick shift. Okay, the Atomic LS system is installed in our 57 Chevy. Now, before we do any initial programming, it's a great idea to do a safety check. That means go inside, turn the key in the on position, cycle the fuel pumps. We're checking for fuel leaks. After all, we are dealing with between 40 and 70 PSI. We don't want any fuel leaks. There are none, we're good. So now we plug in our handheld controller to the power module and we begin our initial setup. Very easy, some basic car guy questions. No need for a laptop, it couldn't be simpler. Here we go. Okay, initial setup, engine type, we have an LS1, although for you guys who have LS2s, LS3s, LS4s, all the different variations, the information's here. You would enter that particular engine type and the rest of the program calibrations would default to that. But because we're running an LS1, we will enter LS1. Then we go back to engine size. Ours is a stock 346, although there are options for different displacements. But again, ours is a standard bore, standard stroke 346. That's where we're at. Go down to camshaft type, we have the stock cam, street stock, that's us. There are also provisions for high output, high lift, high duration type camshafts. We have a stock cam, so let's go back to that. And then uh, coils, because we've entered LS1 engine, it'll default to the standard coil. Well, in our case, we have upgraded to an MSD coil. We know that, so we enter that information so the computer has the right information to create its calibration from. And injectors. If you happen to know that you've installed different injectors on your engine, just look at the injector for a part number, toggle through here, you will find that part number and enter that. But again, we have the standard injectors which end with a 704 part number on our LS1, so default to that. And in the MAP sensors, standard LS1 part, enter that. Fuel pump type, we have a non-pulse width modulation with regulator, that would be us. And then we go with uh, idle RPM target. Well, our initial programming is done, but there are some cool additional features you can take advantage of if you choose to. We have the advanced setup screen. We can check out the fans. We can actually trigger the cooling fans to come on one or two at a time or different temperature settings. There's also, of course, air fuel targets. We can toggle those. Ignition timing. So I don't want you to get the idea this is some simple handheld unit. It's a very powerful computer, but again, you don't have to use all of the features until you're ready to. Okay, we've loaded our baseline calibrations into the handheld programmer. Now it's time to turn the key and start it up. Well, all right, it's alive. Our LS1 powered 57 Chevy with Atomic induction is alive and running. Now what we can do here is we can go to the Atomic LS dashboard feature. Basically, we toggle on up to that. And then we can watch in real time engine tachometer function. We're at 839 RPM. ECT, idle air temperature, TPS, all these things we can read in real time. And keep in mind, we can go down the road and watch what the engine's doing and even tune on it. So it's about as effective as a laptop computer but without the hassle and complexity. This is a true do-it-yourself EFI system for the LS1. Very cool. Well, MSD has done it again with the Atomic LS EFI. You've taken all the mystery out of converting LS1 motors, all the intimidation of the factory wiring harness, that horrible ECM you've got to mount someplace, and again, there's no laptop involved. You can tune this yourself, do it yourself in your driveway at home. Now all we have to do is install the hood and take this beautiful 57 out for a drive.